Hey friends, my name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. That, uh, hey, I'm dropping a link in the live stream chat to what you were just watching. That was a, um, uh, Mike Will made it, a very well-known uh, music producer here in Atlanta. Uh, his kid is on that football team uh, for Kell High School. And um, I've done a bunch of cinematic work for him. And at one point he was like, yo, you want to, you can come out and, and film the football team if you want. He got me linked up with like the, one of the head coaches. Um, are there more than one head coach? I don't know sports things. Sports ball is confusing. Um, and uh, yeah, I came out and farted around and did a fun little edit. And yeah, I, I, I was hoping to do more, but it's tough to get connected with the right people that actually have money. You know, this is a high school. They don't really have much money. I did end up, um, I, I did a job with the Bulldogs, with the uh, Georgia State Bulldogs, uh, but it was through a, uh, a realty, which was interesting. But um, yeah, I don't know. I thought more would come out. I, I thought this came out really good. Um, it did come out really good. I, I just haven't gotten it in front of the uh, the right people, which is a shame, but you know, hey. Big part of uh, getting gigs is just networking, and that's something I don't really enjoy doing. <laughs> I like flying. I don't like schmoozing. Uh, welcome to the show, my friends. It is Monday Night Madness. It's not actually Monday Night Madness. I don't know why I said that. Uh, if Fractal is going to put words in my mouth and, and sell a shirt that says Fractal sucks, well, then you know what? I guess I'll own it. I, I never said that, but hey. Um, let's go for it. We are going to, uh, defractal this, uh, 65 millimeter walk snail build and get, uh, more efficiency, more power, uh, better flight performance by putting it into a regular old plastic frame with a little 0.6 gram TPU print, um, that a really cool dude, uh, that I've been talking to through Instagram, Timmons, who hopefully will jump into the chat at some point. Um, has designed for me. Um, it's something that I've been kind of trying to figure out for a while, and then I, I eventually just kind of, yeah, figured out how to do it. And uh, I mentioned it on a live stream that I, I wish I knew somebody that had uh, cat experience, and Timmons messaged me on Instagram and said, yo, I do it for a living. Um, what do you got? What are you looking to do? And uh, a couple of quick revisions, and this is not like the final final product but damn is it close the the only thing i can think of to change with this is making the holes uh that go into the little hooks in the uh, cockroach v3 frame a little bit smaller but like that's it other than that like the geometry of it is perfect um you can you can run it uh tall like this or you can flip the mount over the mounting points are here they're the little hooks so if you flip this thing over, the lens then goes down a little bit. Um, and uh, basically with with the lens lower, 
it's going to interfere with the battery if you run the battery in the, the normal location. Uh, but Newbie Drone has a 3D print that hooks around the bottom of the battery tray and it'll hang the battery all the way off on the bottom here. Um, I've messaged Kelvin. I, I haven't heard back from him, um, but I've messaged him asking if, if maybe that 3D print file can be made public so that we can all um, use it. I'm really looking forward to that, but to, to start sort of the testing of this mount tonight, um, I'm just going to mount it normal. I'm just going to mount um, the, the AIO and then the walk snail up on top of it, uh, and then we'll run the battery down the middle here with this mount um, on the high setting, basically, uh, and away we shall go. So, yeah, this will be version one, <laughs> but, I mean, I've done these builds in this frame before, and it's completely fine. And like, regardless, you know, getting rid of the the, cockro uh, the um, uh, carbon fiber brace is where we're going to get more efficiency, more power, uh, basically because there's going to be less blocking the thrust down below. Um, we're also going to get more durability. Uh, the, the carbon fiber duct solidly mounts the motors. So every single time you crash, all of that energy um, has to get dealt with in the motor itself. The weak point of all of these tiny little motors is the one millimeter motor shaft. Um, and so after a bunch of crashes, what happens is you just bend that motor shaft and now you start to get jello and your PID performance goes to hell because there's more vibrations getting into the gyro. Um, and so, yeah, it's really rough. Um, and then the thing that I'm most excited about, to be really honest, is this is a solid, like durable, proper camera mount. There's no wobble to it. There's no movement on it. Um, my least favorite thing about these fractal frames is that you literally have to glue the camera to the um, uh, to the carbon fiber in order to get it to stop moving around. This is one that I have glued it, um, and there's still like a little bit of motion to it. As an example, here's one that I haven't glued, and you'll really get to see the problem. It, it's this is something that, like, I didn't realize this for a long time. Uh, the other thing we're going to fix is that the, the carbon fiber, so the way that these fractal frames are designed, you just drive screws into carbon fiber, and so, like, the screw kind of threads the carbon fiber. Well, God forbid you have to, like, remove that screw a couple of times, the carbon fiber strips out. Um, so on this frame, the, the, rear, um, the rear screw mount for the for the stack is completely stripped out. You see it there? See the screw peeking down the bottom? Um, so yeah, and it's starting to happen on the sides as well. So before long this, you know, this Walksnail VRX, uh, VTX rather, and AIO would just fall out of here, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not keeping it in there long enough to, to find out. Um, but this is what I'm talking about with the camera mount. This is one that I haven't glued the camera down. Um, and like I said, th this is not something that that most people have really experienced because you don't notice it. But at some point, I noticed on another build, actually, that my camera was sitting a little bit sideways, like like that. Um, and it re I, I was flying horrible. And then once I got the camera straightened out, I just magically started flying better. It makes an awful lot of sense, right? We spend a lot of time not using the crosshair and figuring out what the center point is when we're flying. Well, if the camera, if, if you, you know, God forbid you crash and the camera starts to look like that at an angle, every single time you try to center something up, you're not going to actually be centered on it. What this, will you please, Logitech, please? There you go. Um, and so, yeah, and then the other problem, and this is just as much of an issue, which, again, I realized a couple of years ago, is that the the camera uh, can also sit a little bit crooked here. It's it's worse with the with the rotation, like the rotation is is the the, the biggest issue. Um, but I have had some issues with this camera not sitting. Well, yeah, there it is. You can actually see it right now. It's not sitting flat in there. Right. See it. Over here, it's even with the duct. Over here, it's not. Um, and it actually doesn't look like I can straighten that out. I, if I if I screwed around enough with this, I could probably straighten that out. Um, but yeah, it's an issue. Again, same deal. If the camera is sideways like this and you level your horizon, 
you're going to be sliding around. Try to shoot a tight, try to shoot a tight gap with, with, you know, the camera like this and point it in this direction and you're going to get really frustrated really fast. Um, admittedly, it's not something that I noticed, uh, early days. It, it's not, it's, it's really something as you get better and better and better and you fly more and more and more. Um, and especially when you concentrate on flying indoors, um, you really have to get good at leveling the horizon and, and you really have to get good at finding the absolute center point of your view. Um, if you want to be able to get through these little tiny gaps with a, with a tiny whoop and whatnot. Um, so having the, having the camera, not just absolutely dead straight ahead is, is a bigger problem than you would believe. Um, if you have if a build in one of these fractal frames, check your camera and if it's if it's off like this or just do the experiment for yourself just you know touch the camera mount and it'll go crooked and fly around a bunch notice how often you're crashing notice you know what it's like to try to shoot gaps and then do your best to to try to straighten it out i mean there's you know you just have to kind of eyeball it so it's never going to be quite perfect but do your best to kind of eyeball it um and then glue it in place use some e6000 uh, against the carbon fiber down here in the corners and glue it in place and then fly it and you'll see what I mean like with with a properly looking dead straight ahead camera you will literally fly better it's wild I, I, I um, yeah I couldn't believe the difference that it made when I realized this I'm trying to think of what um, so one of the one of the moments that I realized this uh, was when I was using these McStinky mounts on uh, the happy model AIO and on the old school happy model AIO, one of the only things I don't love about it is that the UFL is not centered, right? So with the UFL off center here, the McStinky mount sits really low and it sits up like that. All right. And so with that UFL mount not level, the camera mount sits a little bit crooked, right? Because that the UFL on that side is kind of bumping the camera mount up. So if you look really close, the, the camera is just sitting ever so slightly to the side. Um, and yeah, that was one of the times that I kind of noticed it. And when I fixed it, I was able to, it, there was a noticeable improvement. Um, you know, some of us aren't, the best pilots in the entire world. So we have to focus a little bit more on our gear and make sure that our gear is absolutely dialed in um, to help us fly better. Uh, you know, if, if you're the best pilot in the world, then yeah, you can fly garbage gear uh, and, and do some incredible stuff. But you know, what's kind of annoying is that like, if your gear is working better, no matter how good or bad you are, you're gonna fly better, right? So you guys know on this channel, we spend a lot of time um, figuring out how to dial our gear in so that we get the best possible performing rig for exactly the use that, that we're going to put it through, right? Flying inside the house, um, acrobatics inside the house versus like, like Cinewoop kind of stuff, um, flying outside, front yard, backyard, football field, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. In the chat, Slow Cal was first, Hockey Rounds was next, Mac FPV, CMYK, Wake and Bake, Bo Weber, Scotty Scott, Raging Leet, Tongue out FPV, rab, rab, uh, da, baby. <laughs> rabid rabbit FPV, Mick Mucus 661 FPV, Frank Nicholas, uh, Nightwing, I think it's Mick Muckus, but I, I choose to pronounce it Mick Mucus because it makes me laugh. I hope, I hope Mick doesn't take it. Uh, <laughs> Does that offend you? <laughs> you can be honest. Uh, Nightwing FPV is in the house. What's up, homie? Hey, uh, never mind. I'll message you Nightwing. Uh, Douglas Otwell, not applicable. 10 second runtime, 661 again. Doubles FPV, Kevin the Alien. Timmons is in the house. What's up, homie? Uh, Rob Groove, Playmate 1. Northern Tier, Safe Zone FPV. David Ciotti, what's up, dad? How are you? Uh, hockey round, CMYK, where's my wrench? Denzel the Terrible, Huff 19, CB FPV, ten, uh, Bad for Life, Volusia, Riot 9, 661 again, Wake and Bake, also known as Wakanabe, if you're dumb like me and can't pronounce shit. Big J, 541, uh, Morton Upshot, Demo FPV, FPV Greybush, 
the grayest of all the bushes. Uh, V1 hat trick with a super chat. I'll read it in a second. Thank you, homie. Uh, Jason Black and Jay Hines. What's up, friends? Thanks for coming. www.c... Why, why would you say that? Why would anyone say www in 2024? CIDFPV.com has is a spot where you can support me. This is a completely crowdfunded thing that we've got going here. When I review stuff, you don't have to worry. Is he paid off by a big FPV to not say bad things about that product? I don't care. You guys pay my bills, and you don't care when I trash on stuff. I actually think that you like it. So if something sucks, I'm going to tell you that it sucks. If something's awesome, I'm going to tell you that it's awesome. That's the way that it goes because you beautiful bastards have um, all chipped in dollars here, dollars there, dollars everywhere, and that allows me to do this full time. And that's pretty cool. And I really do appreciate that. Um, Patreon helps me out the most. Uh, there's a link over there. You can support me over there for as little as 10 cents a day. Uh, there's also an Etsy store where you can buy yourself some stuff. Uh, stickers and hardware that'll help you during your builds. There's a Fiverr page where you can work one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, I've been flying FPV for over seven years, paying attention to the technical side, doing tons and tons and tons of different builds. Um, I can help you build a rig that's specifically catered for what you want to do with it. I can help you fly better, uh, and I can also help you tune better. Those are the three main things. Or if you just have a ton of questions that you can't get straight factual answers on, that works too. Um, half an hour session, hour session, whatever you got, I can help you out. If you're six months into the hobby and we spend a half an hour, an hour together, you will have the amount of info that somebody like a year and six months or even like two years into the hobby has. And it's actual good information. Um, if you want bad information, just go to Facebook groups. It's more than 50% bad info over there. So if you want to buy stuff that catches on fire and just have rigs that don't fly well, Facebook's got you covered. Terrible website. The worst. I had a, I've had a couple of run-ins with Facebook over the last year, and I'm just done with them. Um, they're just an awful website that should burn to the ground. But I digress. Um, they just they don't have any form of customer service, and they just ban people for no reason. It's 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 incredibly frustrating. If you're ever curious, go onto Reddit and search for like Facebook banned me, uh, and you'll you'll get thousands of res results from people that like built their entire businesses on Facebook and then Facebook just kicks them off and they lose their entire business and there's no recourse that because they have no customer service engine in place. Um, it's, it's incredibly off. It's just brutal, man. It's they They should be beaten with sticks. That didn't take long for good old fashioned. See how you rant. Uh, there's also a Teespring store where you can get shirts like this one. Any motorsports folks will recognize that. Um, there's also my logo on the back and, and there's a whole bunch of affiliate links. Friends, it's 2024. When you do an order on the internet, someone that makes content that you love watching on YouTube has an affiliate link to that website. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't affect you in any way. It's a free way for you to support people with no money at all while you're buying yourself some fun stuff. So do it, yo. I've got affiliate links to a whole bunch of different spots. Get FPV, Newbie Drone, um, FPV Cycle. There's a whole bunch more. They're all listed out over on CIDFPV.com. Uh, one of the really cool things you can do is replace your bookmarks with your favorite content creators' affiliate links. This way, like, you don't even have to think about it because you do have to hit an affiliate link every single time before you check out. When, when you actually check out, it wipes the affiliate link out. So replace your bookmarks with somebody's affiliate links. Uh, if you don't use bookmarks and you just like, when you want to go to get FPV, you just type G E T into the URL bar. What you can do is type G E T. It'll suggest www.getfpv.com. I did it again. Um, off on the right side there, there's a button to like remove suggestion or delete suggestion or something like that. Delete the suggestions that are there, hit my affiliate link a couple of times, and then your browser will think when you type get FPV, you actually want to go to my affiliate link. And now you're supporting people without even thinking about it. Do it, yo. It's free money for us. And we can keep making content for you to watch for free. Uh, today is Monday, March 25th. YouTube doesn't do a great job like dating the stream. So we have to say it with our faces. It's absurd. Bo Weber, if you want to talk to me in chat, uh, not Bo Weber, but 
anyone, if you want to talk to me in chat, you got to type C-I-O-T-T-I-F-P-V. You can put an at in front of it, but you don't have to. C-I-O-T-T-I-F-P-V. It'll light up on orange for me. I'll read your comment. Or you can do a super chat if you want to support the insanity uh, like Hat Trick did. Five Canadian Californian dollars. He says, what is the best glue slash method to prevent standoff screws from getting loose on an HD Zero Meteor build? I'm breaking more standoffs than ducts. HD Zero Meteor build. Okay, so when you say standoffs, I'm gonna assume, prevent standoff screws from getting loose. I'm gonna assume that you mean um, in the frame, like down in the frame, there's a flat piece of plastic and then there's that plastic collar that the screws then uh, drop, the screw goes through the canopy and then it goes into the collar. I'm assuming that you're breaking those collars off. That's a real problem. Um, the, the, my favorite solution is to run longer screws. Uh, on my uh, walk snail builds, uh, including the one that we're gonna see tonight, uh, I use, uh, and I got these from eBay. I got a bag of, I don't know, 50 or whatever, or 20 on eBay. Uh, they are M1.2 by 12 is the length that I use. M1.2 M, M1 by 12 is long enough to go down through the Mobula 6 canopy down through the grommets that I put into the Walksnail VTX, down through the grommet of the AIO, and then uh, down into that plastic collar. And it goes far enough into that plastic collar where it doesn't loosen up and it's nice and strong. You gotta get the screw, like a lot of times with, with Walksnail or HD Zero, right? Um, you got that whole collar and the screw only goes like a little bit into that collar. And then, so that's why it's loosening up. And that's also why you're breaking those collars off. If you get the screw to go all the way down into that collar, what I really like is to try to get it to go down through the collar into the flat plastic below it. Um, but that, that would, I think that would require an M 1.2 by 14, which I wasn't able to find on eBay. I'm sure it's out there. But I've actually had really good luck with the M1.2 M M1 by 12s. So until I start breaking these, I'm just going to keep using them because I have them. Um, so yeah, that that's what you need. But your question is, what's the best? Well, you said, what's the best method? So I think that's the best method. But if you just want to do it with glue, um, you can't use Loctite. Loctite eats plastic. Um, E6000 is actually safe on plastic. So if you took the tiniest little bit of E6000 and put it onto the top of that collar piece and then drive the screw down there, I bet you that would hold it in there. I've never done that. I don't know if uh, th there's a chance that it would it would grab so hard that you wouldn't be able to remove the screw from the plastic and you would end up breaking the um, that collar off anyway. Um, so if you choose to go that route, let us know, please, because... Yeah, I, I don't know of anybody that's really done that, but that that's kind of what I would do, I think. I guess you could also maybe try to do it with hot glue, but like that's gonna suck because you're gonna have to try to get it on there quick and then put the screw, it, it, that's probably gonna be a nightmare. E6000 takes like 12 hours to cure, so you got plenty of time. Put it the tiniest little bit, I'm t like the tiniest little bit is, is all you want on there. Um, but that's not gonna help you, well, it, it will help you breaking those off um, stop breaking those off because the screws will stop backing out. Um, you know, I was just thinking it looks a little flat in here. There we go. That didn't change much. It changed a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's going to help a little bit because the screws will stop backing out, but running a longer screw to engage more of that little plastic bastard, um, is going to be the way to go in my opinion. So do that. Oh, I know what's going on. I know what's going on. I forgot to do this. Hey, that's better. Now we're talking. The most professional streamer you've ever seen. Uh, Hat Trick, thank you so much for the uh, generous super chat, man. I appreciate it. Uh, 10 second runtime says, are the Happy Model RS0802 Bells compa comparable with the EX or SE staters? Uh, let me double check what the RS0802 bell is. I'm 99%. Oh, oh, that I do not know the answer to. That is a really good question. I, I would love to know the answer to that. 
I'll bet you that it is. I'll, I'll I will say with 98% certainty <laughs> um, that it is. Because look, why why would Happy Model change the design? First of all, this stator looks exactly like all of the other staters, right? Um, but not only that, why on earth would Happy Model change this stator design for the different bell? They haven't done that yet. They've got the old school, let's go to, uh, that's a really good question though, man. Um, so let's take a look at the full line of Happy Model motors. Um, Happy Model makes all of these motors for Tiny Whoop. They're, they're uh, slightly different, but they're, they're the same general design. So if we go into the 802s, so there's the onesie design, as Tiny Whoop calls it, and then there's the hex. Uh, the hex is EX uh, in, in Happy Model terms. So the Happy Model EX motor is in tiny whoop land the the hex motor and so they've got two different bell designs here let's pull this guy up all right so yeah this is the oldest um well the oldest is a two-piece version of this but uh this is the super old school what tiny whoop calls calls onesie bell design uh it's got the five round holes in it uh, used to be a two-piece bell. You've seen these before. The old school newbie drone motors are, are exactly like this. Um, nowadays, it's a one-piece bell, which is very cool. This is the most durable and the heaviest um, of the the bell designs. The um, the RS motor that we're going to look at in a second has a one and a half millimeter motor shaft, um, which is going to be way more durable than these two motors that we're looking at. But in terms of one millimeter motor shaft happy model motors this design the the onesie design is going to be the most durable and also the heaviest um and then there's the ex or hex and this is a slightly lighter weight but slightly less durable what what can happen is the magnets can can come out of this bell um, on really hard flat bottom crashes. It really does not happen often. There, there was like, it, it was a big, when these EX motors first came out, it happened to a bunch of people. Um, and everybody was like, oh God, you know, stay away from this new lightweight motor. It's spitting magnets out, blah, blah, blah. But then it kind of stopped happening. And I've talked to Jesse about it and he's like, yeah, I haven't heard of it happening in like ages. So I don't think it's much of an issue. Um, what I can tell you with absolute certainty, because I did it like a week or two ago, is that these EX motors and these onesie motors are completely compatible with each other. You can take the bells from one and put it on the stators from the other, and it works great. There's, there's no problem whatsoever doing that. Um, the RS motor, again, I, I can't possibly imagine a world where they would change the stator for this motor, so I'm pretty sure that you could take this bell off of here and then put it onto either one of these stators because it would just make sense for all of these stators to be exactly the same. Um, and yeah, that's kind of brilliant, dude. Uh, 10 second. I, I never thought about doing that. I, I, I did it the, the hard route and, and I ordered a set. So tiny whoop does sell, uh, motors, 802s, Happy Model 802s with a one and a half millimeter motor shaft. Why can't I find them? Where are the iGAO motors? What's happening? Have I lost my mind? 802 motors, hex, brush, should be in here. There they are. Uh, so this is a onesie. This is a Tiny Whoop onesie bell but then it's got a one and a half millimeter motor shaft. Um, the reason that, that 10 second runtime is onto something really interesting here is that this, uh, this bell here on the RS motor is lighter than the onesie bells. And so, and I think these are, well, A, these are in stock, so that's that's gigantic. So if you wanted a 33, th like the reason why I did this is I wanted a 33,000 KV, they're on here. Um, I'm sorry, they're on here. I wanted a 33,000 KV 802 with a one and a half millimeter motor shaft for this 75 mil 
uh, fat ass walk snail build. Um, and I really wish that I'd done it with the RS bells because I hacked up a set of kind of rare iGal motors. Um, and these onesie bells are a little bit heavier. I'd rather have the lighter weight bell. So, of course, I just placed a get FPV order like two hours ago, or I would have thrown um, at least one of these motors on the order, uh, and then I could have tested it. But, yeah, like I said, I can't imagine that they would have redesigned the stator for this RS motor. They, they might have. They, they very well might have, but I really, really, really doubt it. Um... And so, yeah, as long as they didn't do that, you'd be able to just swap this uh, stator right across without any problems whatsoever. So, I'm going to leave this RS motor open in a tab. And hopefully you all don't go... I, I will say this. Th this, is, this is an ugly color. I, you know, I got cool blue motors on mine. Although, I don't know, this is a pretty cool design. <laughs> this is a pretty cool looking motor belt. Um, so yeah, uh, damn, yo, good call. Good thinking, brother. Shit. Uh, so for 10 bucks a motor, you can get a uh, motor bell that you can interchange onto any KV you want. From t So Tiny Whoop has all of the high KV motors, right? So here's the, oh, they're, and, and they're sold out now. Um, here's like the, the mother of all uh, 802s, right? 33,000 KV. Um, I ran these uh, a few weeks ago when I first got them and they're just incredible. This is such a wild motor. Um, and it's doing pretty good on this 75 millimeter walk snail build, but I, I just, it's, it's just not quite enough. Um, over the next like week or two, you're going to see a bunch of different motors get thrown at this 75 millimeter walk snail setup um, to try to get it a little bit more outdoor freestyle ready. Uh, because I'm just, I'm not getting enough power, um, with these, with these motors. I, I it's look six extra grams from walk snail changes everything. That is a 25% weight increase. That's like taking a 600 gram five inch rig and bolting a 200 gram, uh, 150 gram camera to it. Right. So like you've got your, your FPV cycle glide carrying around a session five, and then you strap a, a, a hero 12, with a big thick TPU mount to the bottom in addition to the session. Imagine how that rig would fly. It's going to be way different. And that's that's what I'm running into with these is um, it's just there's just not enough power there to make it like a fully freestyle ready rig. Um, they fly like Cinewhoops. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like that's a really cool flight style and you can make some really wild stuff with 1080p 60 um, footage out of the walk snail system that just looks way, way better than it should. But that's not what I want. Like I, I, I want this to be a freestyle rig because what's cool about that is freestyle rigs will also do Cinewhoopy stuff. So if I can figure out a way to make enough power on these things, I can have it do, you know, accomplish the, the job of like hardcore outdoor freestyle, but also throw a, a, a motor limit on it and you can fly it like a Cinewhoop as well. Um, we're going to see, though, you know, like right now, um, right now, it's as light as possible. 802, tiny little motors, bi blades, Meteor 75 airframe, uh, Beta FPV Cross AIO, one of the lightest available, if not the lightest, no, one of the lightest available, uh, Walk Snail Light, uh, the Mobula 6 Canopy. Uh, that's it. That's the whole build. Um, and when they're really light like this, they're going to have the best efficiency. They're going to be the quietest. Um, and those are things that make good Cinewhoops. Uh, but again, it's uh, I want it to be a freestyle rig. Um, yeah, I might regret it, but we'll see. I can always go back. I have all these motors. I, I can always go um, and put it back into sort of Cinewhoop status. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, dude, really... Uh, I, Thank you for asking that question, because that gives me all kinds of dirty, dirty ideas. They're not dirty at all, but they are ideas. Uh, I'm assuming that's why you're asking the question. Maybe you're not. Uh, Rabid Rabbit FPV says, best tips on tight power loops in the house. I'm struggling to get them 
uh, in tight spaces with my whoop. Um, the the main thing with dialing in on power loops is being more patient. I, I work on this with people in fiver sessions all the time, um, is being gradual with the throttle increase. Um, what the, the mistake that most people make, right? You need to remember that your nose down, when, when you're flying around your nose down. So the mistake that most people make is they start to pitch back for the power loop and they hammer the throttle and that sends them straight up in the air. You need to wait, you need to slowly increase the throttle and now you hammer the throttle and then that's gonna give you enough rearward momentum but it's also gonna keep you from shooting up into the ceiling in the house, right? That's that's one of the issues. So be more gradual with your throttle and the, the, the super trick is wait to go full throttle until you're like this and the way that you know you're like this if you think about the up tilt on the camera right the camera is not zero up tilt the camera is 15 20 30 degrees up tilt so if you think about the camera up tilt the point where you want to be full throttle is the point where your camera is looking straight up so as soon as you see all ceiling basically in your camera view that's where you want to be full throttle and so that's the point that you do a full throttle blip and then jump off the throttle and you can snap it back and that'll keep your um, that'll keep your power loop nice and low. Um, way back when at Quad Camp Atlanta, when I did the the Matty flip and the power loop that everybody lost their minds about inside the warehouse with a 4S three inch rig, um, you know, in in the in the exterior footage, like all the people that were filming me doing it, you really notice that like I fly under the table and then it pitches back. And then it like shoots back like this, like a V. You know, we think of power loops as like this nice circle. They're typically not. They're typically not a nice circle. Um, they're more like you fly through and then throw yourself back. Because it's it's not about like like we're not flying for line of sight. We're flying for the for the camera. And doing it like this looks a lot better because you come in through and then you show the ceiling, and now you have time inverted to show yourself going back through the gap in, in my case it was it was two folding tables stacked on top of each other so you actually get a chance to watch your watch yourself go through the gap it also lets you like fly it you're, you're not just doing it completely blind you're able to actually see something and reference off of it as you go through the gap and then snap it back around and go back under um so yeah there you go man that's uh those are the biggest things that people do wrong with power loops. Um, you know, when, when I do the sessions on Fiverr, we go into uh, Velocidrone and we have an audio or a Skype call going. Um, and I can actually spectate you fly and your stick positions. And so I can sit there and just watch your stick positions and say, nope, you're too late. You're too early. Um, you're not increasing the throttle um, quick enough, too slow. You're not pitching backwards enough. Um, so that really helps me without that feedback. This is kind of all I can give you, but that is a super common mistake that people make with power loops that um, even you knowing about will will help you out in, in dialing those in. It's hard, dude. Always keep that in mind. Doing these like three dimensional tricks inside the house is extremely difficult. Do not get um, uh, frustrated with it. You're going to crash a thousand times, like literally a thousand times. Um, you just have to keep hitting it over and over and over again, and eventually you will get good at flying in the house. But fuck, it is a wrong, it is a long road. Um, but stick with it because when you get good at it, it's so much fun. Every single time it's raining, you're like, I don't even care. Here we go. Denzel the Terrible says, "Good evening, friends." CBFPV says, "What payment method do you want for the Runcam Hybrid?" Uh, best bet is PayPal over on CIDFPV.com. There's a PayPal button that makes it way easy for you. Um, and then in the note, just make sure you say, yo, this is for the Runcam Hybrid. Here's my address. Here's my email for tracking. Um, and yeah, I'll get it on out to you. 10 Second Runtime says, if it fits on the 65 V3, will the print fit on the 75 Cockroach? Unfortunately not. Uh, on each version, there are now three versions of the Cockroach. This is the new one. Um, on each version of the Cockroach frame, they have... Uh, spaced out the hooks differently. They, they get wider and wider and wider. Um, so we will have to ask Timmons very nicely uh, 
I can get him the measurements, but we'll have to ask him nicely if, if he can modify the print for the wider uh, mounts for us. I have a feeling he'll he'll be willing to do it because he, he seems like a super cool guy. Uh, do, 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 do. Hat trick, thanks again for the super chat. Much appreciated. Jay Hines says, with a stock Meteor 75 ESC, if I was to upgrade to higher KV motors, do I need to upgrade the AIO as well? Uh, newbie. Uh, you might be a newbie, Jay, but your head's in the right place. That's a great question. Um, the answer is no. The uh, I and, and many folks have run these little tiny AIOs with 5 amp ESCs on giant, I mean, in the world of tiny whoops, gigantic motors, all the way up to like 1102, uh, 22,000 kV, and they're fine. What you want to remember is um, the the a, a five amp ESC. That five amp rating is per channel, so 20 amps total, and that is a number that you can run constant. That is the constant uh, limit. There's another number which for a five amp FET is six amps. And that's the burst limit. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but that gets us from 20 amps to 24 amps. And there just aren't motor. Th these little motors just don't pull 24 amps. It, it just does not happen. And even if they do, they only pull 24 amps for like a split second before the battery sags down and the battery can't deliver 24 amps. And that burst rating is three or five seconds let's go on the low end and say three seconds there's no way in hell there's no tiny whoop battery on earth that you're going to be able to pull 24 amps out of for three full seconds in a row it's just not going to happen um and so yeah none of us have really cooked i, I haven't heard of anybody cooking a uh an esc fet one of these five amp esc fets from just sitting full throttle too long they die for all the other reasons <laughs> they die from crashes they die from reverse polarity um there's a million other things that kill these aios the vtx dies the receiver dies there's a million different ways um but yeah asking too much from the battery and the motors right because it's not just the motors it's also the battery um is just not something that we've seen kill these five amp fets which is so cool like one less thing to worry about is is a godsend. Um, and for the record, in the five inch world, this whole like 45 amp, 55 amp, 65 amp thing is dumb. There is no, again, there is no battery on earth that's gonna pull 200, uh, 260 amps. It's gonna push 260 amps into the powertrain. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, Ryan Harrell of Mini Quad Test Bench still flies 25 amp um, ESCs on his five inch rigs. And last I talked to him, he still hasn't blown one up because 25 amps is the continuous rating. So it's actually like the burst rating, I believe is either 30 or 35 amps. So let's go on the low end and say 30 amps, right? That's 120 amps total. And then there's that same period of time, three to five seconds. There's not a battery on earth that you're going to pull 120 amps for three straight seconds. It's, it, it's just not there. The, the, the lipos are not, um, sag proof enough. And, and we just don't have power systems that are that aggressive. Um, so if you're sitting there like, Oh, is it worth the extra $10 for this 65 amp ESC over 55? Hell no. Look for a 35 amp. If you want to be extra safe, look for a 35 amp. That's what I run on all these and I've never killed a 35 amp ESC um, because of amp draw. I've killed them from, yeah, doing 20 story dives into the concrete and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we've, uh, there's been a, uh, there's been a arms race uh, in the world of ESCs that is completely unnecessary. On the flip side, sure, when sometimes when you smash into something there's like a back current that goes through and that can like spike a really mega amp number and so a 35 amp versus a 25 amp or even maybe like a 45 amp versus a 35 amp might maybe possibly someday eventually save that esc but this 55 and 65 amps thing is just absolute nonsense. Like that, that's just ridiculous. That like for a lifter, okay, carrying a, you know, kilogram 
medium format camera. Um, okay, maybe with, you know, eight or 10 inch props and eight motors and shit like that. Um, but yeah, for a five inch freestyle rig, it's, it's just silly. Uh, ESCs that are manufactured better last longer, not ESCs that have a higher amp that have higher rated FETs. Um, what makes an ESC last a long time is a company that is actually building them with quality control measures and the best that I've found in seven plus years is Akon. Um, and Akon manufactures T Motors high end electronics. So if you get the expensive T Motor electronics, you're getting Akon stuff. Or if you manage to find um, the Akon stuff, that's the best that I've ever found. It demolishes Hobby Wing. I've actually never had an Akon component fail other than dropping it 20 plus stories to concrete. Um, and I've been through five Hobby Wing ESCs, I want to say, over the years. Um, so, yeah. And, and Hobby Wing is considered to be, like, one of the best, right? Everybody else is uh, typically below Hobby Wing. So, like, you know, if everybody else is here, maybe Hobby Wing is here, but Akon is, like, up here somewhere. It's it's wild. The only problem is it's hard to find their stuff. But Pyrodrone has some. Um, Race Day Quads, I think, also has some Akon stuff, which is great. Morton Upshot says, showing your age. Always, man. Always. Douglas Otwell noticed, is the lava lamp now black? It is indeed, uh, because uh, this is actually Azalea's lava lamp that she doesn't uh, use anymore, and it has a little USB port on it. So I've got this awesome little sign plugged into the USB there. And, and I'm seeing if I like it here. The only thing is, like, when I move over here, I kind of cover it up. But I have a tendency to kind of sit right here, and it's perfect. I, I, I do, the black does kind of, well, no, I was about to say the black does kind of blend in a little bit too much, but I'm dragging my feet being lazy about getting the LED strips installed in the back of these shelving units, and that'll put this amazing purple glow here, and then the black will be fine. So there's my motivation to get that shit done. I have everything I need. I, it's just, I got to pull these all off the wall, and it's just a pain in the ass. Uh, Mick Bucus says, you are pronouncing it correctly. Uh, carry on, only offended when you mess up, wake and bake. <laughs> Denzel says, uh, how can, how can we dial into the BBS? Oh, uh, I should know what BBS is. BBS. I, what's messing me up is, to me, BBS is a wheel, com a German wheel company. Um, what is, what's the acronym for BBS? Board of Behavioral Sciences? That's not it. What the hell is BBS? Can we dial into it? I don't, I, I'm, I'm, my brain is very smooth. Demo FPV says new lava lamp. Uh, CMYK uh, with the CIDFPV.com link. Thank you, dude. Uh, Denzel uh, tagged me again and, and helped me. I, I can't, I can't figure it out. Uh, the gal pup says, Hey, I'm making that crown 65 millimeter frame build with the fractal 65. Uh, still contemplating it. The crown frame, uh, itself is starting to grow on me. Uh, but what should I use for the AIO and camera? Um, that's a right now today. They're, I don't really know what AIO to recommend. Um, I also don't, I, I, I don't remember what build you're doing. Well, look, if you're doing a walk snail build, you're gonna use the beta FPV cross AIO, done. There, don't use any other AIO. If you're doing an analog build, I don't have a good AIO to recommend today. The, the Mobula 6 2024 AIO is coming and that's definitely gonna be the one to get, but I can't recommend anything else. It's crazy, but like all the other AIOs like have issues or they're fragile or yeah. So if it's an analog build, you got to wait. You got to wait for the Mobula 6 2024. I know that sucks, but yeah. Um, and then camera, that's a that's a that's a pretty individualized sort of question there. I, I like the Runcam Nano 3. Um, there are loads of people that don't. Uh, so yeah, my favorite's the Runcam Nano 3, but you might want something that's wider field of view. You might want, want something that's more contrasty. Um, there's a lot of different cameras out there and, and they all have different, 
uh, looks to them. Uh, so yeah, start looking for um, reviews here on YouTube of the cameras that you're interested in, and then you can look at people that are you know flying around with them and see if you like it. Uh, Scott FPV says, "What's up?" Ten second runtime says, "Compatible." Uh, compatible. What were we talking about before? Ten second runtime. Hold on, I'm scrolling back up. Uh, well, you know, we got a lot to do. So, uh... oh, 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 you were correcting yourself. Compatible. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, uh, where were we? Mo FPV says title is wild. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I, look, if you're going to put words into my mouth, then fuck it. I'll start saying those words, you know, screw it. Uh, monumental dawn. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. Now that's a, that's a, woo. That's a YouTube name. Monumental dong. Jesus. That's, that's confidence. Long shot. But does anyone know where you can get a Mobula 6 ELRS in stock? Um, the old school one is gone forever. Uh, the new one, uh, which is great. The Mobula 6 2024 um, it's so close, man. Like I would give it a week and it'll probably be available all over the place. I think you can order them now from like AliExpress and Banggood, but I haven't seen any stateside resellers selling them. I never recommend that you order from China, especially when in a week you're going to be able to get it from get FPV or pyro drone, um, or newbie drone. And then you've, if you need to return it, you're not having to send it to the other side of the world. Um, so yeah, I'm going to recommend that you wait for sure. Uh, it, it's, it's, it'll be here very soon. Kevin James says, uh, tiny whoop sent me a toy bell in a recent order. I'm not sure if it's a hat or a kickstand. <laughs> you got to put a picture of it up on the, uh, up on the discord. That'd be awesome. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm interested. Zach says I ordered a set of 25,000 KV 0802 hex motors, uh, from fractal engineering with one and a half millimeter shafts going to put 33,000 KV stators in them. Very cool. Uh, do, 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 do. Douglas Otwell says, I'd love to see a live stream on flying indoors. Simple things like blips and flips and loops. Um, I try to do that a little bit every stream. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, when you guys have questions, hit me with them. I, I, I it's interesting. Like, I, I, I as much as I want to, like, there's probably like 20 tips that everybody could benefit from like simple stuff with soldering um like motor sizing stuff pid tuning stuff right like there's there's all of these like really for me basic things that for most people that haven't been doing this forever are not basic at all and are like game changers um but like and i would love to, on one hand i would like love to say those things every single live stream but it would drive you guys that watch more than like two or three of these live streams completely insane. So like, I always try to mix it up and, and not try to sound like a broken record. Um, so yeah, when, when like always guys always hit me with, with quite like when you see me flying around, tag me. If you see me do something that's like really clean or you don't understand always, 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 always tag me. I love talking about like, flying and like flying dynamics and like what we're doing and like the little things that I've figured out to make Matty flips easier or power loops easier or whatever. Um, like that's my favorite. That is my absolute favorite talking about that stuff. Um, because I, I, I love imparting that knowledge on all of you, but also it helps me. Like it really does when, when, when you get really good at something and then you start teaching it, in order to teach it, you have to think about it differently. And in the process of thinking about it differently and thinking how to explain it to somebody that is years behind you, it really helps you figure out like the mechanics of what you're doing. Like you kind of, you get so deep into something that you're just sort of doing it. You're just going through the motions. But then like when you actually stop and take a step back and like look at what you're doing, a lot of times you can be like, well, what if I delay the, the throttle blip? Or what if I go earlier on the throttle blip and like nine times out of 10 in playing around like that, you'll figure out like an, another little nuance to it. That'll make you better. 
Um, it happened for me back in the days of motorsports, like after a couple of driver of the years up in New Jersey, um, in their autocross program, um, I started instructing really heavily and I got even faster from instructing, which was great because I'd kind of hit a wall. Um, I'd, I'd kind of plateaued a little bit. Um, but then in the process of learning to instruct and then starting to instruct 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 students per weekend, um, it actually made me a lot faster, which was really cool. And the same thing has happened with, with FPV. So it's, um, yeah, I know that it's, it's, it's a real thing. I know that it's not just like, and, and I've talked to other instructors who have, who've, yeah, like we've talked about that and been like, yo, isn't that weird? Like, yeah, it's su super cool though. Right. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, always, always, always when, when, when we're flying around here, um, and you guys see something cool, tag me, mention it like, and, and we'll talk more about it. You don't have to ask a question about it. You can just, you know, like say that was super clean or, or whatever. And that'll just trigger me to like, oh, cool. And then if I, if I, if there's something specific that I do with that, with that movement, I'll, I'll dive into it. Uh, Morton Upshot says showing my age bulletin board service. Um, bulletin board. How do we dial into the bulletin board service? Look at all you people that knew bulletin board surface. You, you're the, you're the old ones, not me. Ignore the gray beard hairs. Uh, Denzel the Terrible says OG Internet BBS's bulletin board system had to dial, uh, had to dial directly in the eighties. Um, yeah, my, uh, I, I grew up with that. My, my dad. Oh God damn it! What was it called? Oh, I hope he's not watching. He, he'll, he would be ashamed that I don't remember it. Um, it was, it was where he, um, my dad's like internet name, right? Uh, is, uh, binary bear because computers binary. Um, and then my dad's a, a big guy and, uh, he came up with that name back in the days of, I, I, I was really hoping that would work. Um, I can't think of the name of it. I can't think of the name of the, um, it'll come to me. Somebody's already typing it in the chat. Uh, this would have been when I was like less than 10. So we're talking about the eighties here, like the late eighties, early nineties. Kevin, the alien says, what are your thoughts on capacitor ratings for 4s? I realize my HD zero crux 35 came with a 16 volt hundred UF capacitor. Is that really enough? Uh, for 4s? Uh, just barely. <laughs> That's interesting that, that they put that low of a um, voltage capacitor on there. Uh, wow. Yeah, I mean, you haven't blown it up yet. Technically, no, it's not enough, right? Because when you charge the batteries, they're 4.2 per cell, and that's north of 16 volts. Maybe capacitors are under spec a little bit. I, I never really thought about that. I always just made it a point to use a capacitor that was like two, three, four, five volts extra. Um, then, uh, so yeah, wow, weird. Uh, TX Flyer Ken says, which goggles would you suggest? The Fat Shark Dominator Digital HD or the Walksnail Avatar HD Zero Goggles X? Um, that's a tough one. I did just see that there was a... Um, a uh, Walksnail just did another firmware update for the Goggles X. Uh, the problem is the Fat Shark Dominators are a really good deal. Um, they're really, really cheap. And um, I have a set of the, the, the Walksnail version of them, and they're amazing, and I absolutely love them. So you can't go wrong with the, that. That's your safe bet. Your, your safe choice is the, um, is the Dominators. The Goggles X at some point will be way better. Uh, maybe that's right now today with this new firmware update, but man, they've had some teething pains with those goggles. And, and I've just kind of been like, Nope, that, I have no interest in changing these goggles. I, I, I typically don't, if, if something works, I'll keep it until it explodes. Um, that's a tough question, man. Uh, uh yeah. Safe choices. The dominators, if you want to try to future proof yourself a little bit, the goggles X will, you know, down the road, do something that the dominators don't. Um, and they will get the firmware figured out if they haven't already. Um, so yeah, if you have the money, uh, goggles X, if you're trying to save a couple of bucks, the dominators are, will, you'll love them. They're great.
great, great, great goggle. I, I've been blown away by the walk snail system and by those goggles. Um, uh, DJ Beef says, uh, Prodigy, uh, CompuServe. I was going to say CompuServe. Uh, Morton Upshot got it. No, it uh, it was not pro. Oh, no, it was Genie. Oh my God, it was Genie. Right, it was Genie, and then it was CompuServe. That's right. Um, oh, I was I was wrong though. He, uh, my dad's in the chat. Uh, he was a two bear on Genie. Where, wh when did you start using Binary Bear, Dad? For the record, uh, the, the Binary <laughs> Binary Bear today has a completely different potential meaning. <laughs> Than it did back then, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> that, that's my dad's old school <laughs> bear. Uh, yeah, I I won't dive any farther into that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was genie. That's what it was. It was genie. Um, genie was a BBS, right? And and dad, you were also on CompuServe, I I, I believe, right? Um, I was going to say CompuServe, but then I was like, no, that's not it. That's a company that somebody worked for at some point. No, um, it was Genie. That's right. It was Genie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genie was a BBS, right? Uh, I think CompuServe was as well, right? Maybe. I don't know. I wasn't really... I've never really been to computers. Hey, we're caught up on chat. Um, 110 baud modem. Oh, God, the sound of modems. Uh, when I became a uh, sysop, it became A2 Bear uh, in the Apple II forum. Uncle Vince was a CompuServe subscriber. Interesting. Very cool. Not BBL, though. Ah, okay. Okay. Oh, well. I tried. Uh, let's get this fractal frame off this rig since fractal sucks, right? Apparently. Those words have been put into my mouth, and, you know, I'm just going to go with them. I'm just going to go with them. Uh, it, it, so, just for, for anybody that's missed the whole weirdness um, between fractal and me... Uh, I very well may have said at some point, Ugh, fractal sucks. Look at the look at this camera mount being a pain in the ass, or I, I lost a bunch of efficiency. I don't know. I don't remember it. What what I do remember, and what those of you that have been around a long time will be able to e very easily back me up on because it's the truth, um, is that I've always been extremely, extremely, extremely kind about fractals products that for me don't really work super well um and there are some real issues with that, that we talked about earlier in the in the live stream um but i've always like pointed those out but then i've always made it a point and we're going back like a long time now right like this probably 50 60 70 instances of me doing this over the last couple of years of this live stream um i would explain all that just give you my experience and then i would say but here are the things that the fractal frames do really really well i always 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 made it a point um because eves has done a lot for fpv um he's done a lot of like really technical uh research he's one of the people that kind of myth busted the the diamond aio being garbage um and i've always said really nice things about him and, I, and I've always been very complimentary of him and I, and I do appreciate all of that work that he's done and I've made it a point to call all of that out because that's only fair um and that's gone on for a long time uh I've also been extremely complimentary of heads from um uh infinity loops and you know on Many, many, many occasions I've said something that I do think is true, that he's one of the best FPV pilots on Earth. Um, and I don't know. I, I thought I, I considered those two people to be not necessarily friends because I've never really like talked to them. Pers I, I guess I've talked to heads a couple times, but I've never talked to Eves. Um, friends is a weird designation, but like I, I always considered myself to be on good terms with them. Um I admired their work. I talked about them all the time, and and yeah, I, I thought that was cool. Uh, I thought we were all cool. Uh, I don't know, six months ago maybe, CMYK uh, sent me a, uh, a, a, a screenshot of heads wearing a shirt. So CMYK FPV uh, has done pretty much all of my graphic design. Um, him and I spent a ton of time and effort, more him than me, 
uh, on the new logo. And it's something that, you know, we just talked to death and, and put, I don't know, what do you think, CMYK? 10, 15, 20 hours into easily, just going back and forth, different revisions, different ideas. Um, and so, yeah, and, and it's, you're, you're, if, if you're trying to make, if you're trying to run your own business, um, your logo means a lot. It's something that you spend a lot of time on. It's your brand. It's all these other $5 words. Um, it's important. It, it's, it's an important thing to you. And you put it all over the place. You spend a lot of time uploading it to a million different places. It, it's something that means a lot to you. Um, maybe that's shallow. Maybe I'm, I'm a shallow bastard. But look, if, if you ask anybody that's gone through the the insanity that is to try to run your own business um you will find this is a very common thing uh and so you know cmyk and i have tons of time and effort and work into this logo well he sends me this uh image of heads wearing a shirt with a rip off of my logo with fractal sucks uh written in like the same font i mean poorly done but whatever uh and it and it hurt like it 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 really did like it it really felt like a betrayal um and like yeah it it, it was just it was not cool at all it, it 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 was just yeah just a shitty thing to do in my opinion um and then i found then come to find out that fractal and so like initially i thought like oh you know heads just hates me whatever that's fine um, he had a shirt made trashing on me. Great. Uh, come to find out that it's the shirt is being sold over on Fractal's website. And so then, of course, you know, that, that hurts again. Like, what the fuck? Um, and so then, you know, some some people start talking about it, this, that, and the other. Uh, Jesse from Tiny Whoop, actually, I, I was... Uh, I forget what we were talking about, but he actually brought it up, and, and I... I explained the whole story to him and he was like, man, that sucks. I, I can't believe they did that. Cause like he has a relationship with them as well. Um, and he actually, uh, he called him out publicly on, on a Facebook post. And he was like, yo, what, you know, what's this about? Like, this is not cool. Um, we are way too small of a community to be trashing on each other. Like we need to be lifting each other up. What's going on. And, both heads and eaves like did this really weird thing where they like they said like i, I don't know what you're talking about what what, what do you mean I, I i don't know i don't know what you're talking about man i i, I just I, I don't and they just and that was it and, and i think jesse maybe like replied once like what, what do you, i i, I explained what and yeah it was very weird it was very like i don't know like i guess like like azalea has like done this before but she's 14 years old. I, I don't know. It was uh, 13 years old. It was, it was very weird, man. It was a very, very weird situation. Um, and then that was it. And th th like, they didn't, there was nothing that came of it other than like, you know, me feeling like shit and kind of being pissed and like CMYK's work getting ripped off. And like, so yeah, I don't know. It, it, it was the whole thing. Look, I, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm being overly sensitive, but you know what? Like, you won't know. Like, you have to just take my word for it because you won't know what that feels like until you've gone down this road, right? Like, this has been a long, painful fucking road to be able to do this full time. Um, and, like, the amount of effort and, and blood and sweat and tears of anybody that, that makes does this, until you've done that, you, you're just... You're just not going to fully understand it. I, I I wish I had a better way of kind of putting it into, put into words. But like back before I'd done this, I wouldn't have thought it was a big deal either, either I guess. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, it it fucking hurt, man. It, it, it hurt me. And I don't appreciate that. And there's no reason for it. There's no fucking reason for it. And, you know, it's it's become very obvious that it's not cool. And it's still up there. So obviously they did it on purpose to, and you know, they achieved the result, right? Like they fucking hurt me. And so there it is. Great job. Appreciate it. 
our community is now wasting time on some shit when we should be trying to find a better <laughs> a better motor to to pair up with a Walksnail 75 rig. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the whole situation. And I don't know, for whatever reason, tonight I was like, you know what? Fuck it. You want to put words in my mouth? I'll, I'll just go with it. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, I thought that I could just drop, I mean, I could, I, I could just drop this into this frame, but I've got these extra tall grommets on here and there's no real reason for that. So this just got a bunch more confusing, but luckily it's only 11, 11. Um, so we've got time. So I'm going to break these two boards apart here. I'm going to take these extra tall, uh, Mobula seven HD rubber grommets off of this beta FPV AIO and replace them with nice short little grommets. And yeah, that will make this thing a little bit more durable because it'll lower the uh, the top stack and the screws will go a little bit farther into these plastic collars. So, uh, oh, sleepy CBR with a five dollar super chat. Thank you, homie. He says testify. <laughs> uh, my dad says frame giveaway. Oh, we we will try. Uh, we will try. I got to get this done first though. If if I can get this done quick enough, uh, we will certainly do a giveaway. Thank you for the reminder, dad. Uh, it's a team effort around here, yo. Team effort. My dad is, uh, I think they are still in Florida. Every, uh, my parents have it all figured out, yo. Y you want to live your best life? Get an RV. Li live in the north. And then as soon as it gets cold, get in your RV for six months and go on a tour of the, of the south. That's what they do every year. And every year I'm just like, wow, that, that's it, man. That's it. No winter. You just completely avoid winter. Like... What could be better than that? Some people actually like the winter. Those people are fucking crazy. <laughs> Carabelle, they're in Carabelle. I love it. Uh, all right. Let's pick a grommet. So this is a beta FPV stat, uh, beta FPV AO, which is really thin. Uh, beta. So the newbie drone grommet would be a good choice but also uh beta fpv sells this really nice little grommet kit uh and in that kit there are blue black and clear grommets and each one of those grommets is meant for a different thickness of aio uh and i'm stalling because i'm trying to remember <laughs> Which of those? So there's the clear one. Uh, here's the blue one that you get in that kit. Those aren't it. So it's the black one. It's the black grommet in that kit that is designed for... Here it is. Uh, that is designed for really thin AIOs. I don't think I've ever shown you guys this before. Let's see if this camera will focus. Look at that. So... In the kit from Beta FPV, you get the clear, the blue, and this black right here. And if you look real careful, the gap where the AIO goes is really skinny on that one. It's really fat on the blue one. And then on the clear one, it's right in between. But if you look at this Beta FPV AIO, it's very skinny. It's very thin. Um, and the grommets that Newbie Drone ships with everything have an impossibly small little gap in the middle. So these are what I'm gonna use. I, also, I have tons of these. Um, so that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the newbie drone grommets. Um, does any of that make a difference? Probably not, but why not? Why not do it? You know what I mean? Like, it's just a matter of tweezering those grommets out of the little toolkit. Oh shit, I lost that one. Um, yeah, it only makes a difference if you don't do it, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like if you do it, then it won't make a difference, but at least you've done it. So it's fine. Do that. A lot of doing going on. Uh, Aaron Muller says, is that a magnetic mat? Not down here, but up here. Uh, this, this area, ow, 
Jesus. That hurt like hell. Uh, yeah, up here below this mat, there's a big strip of, of magnet. So the, the stuff up here doesn't roll around as, as bad. Yeah, you can kind of, you can't really see it, but this mat, I've, I've had a lot of different work mats. Uh, this is hands down my favorite. The, the silicone of this mat is grippy. So when you're, when you're doing like something awkward with like the soldering iron and you're all like, Argh! You can, you can like push on the stack and it'll grip against the silicone. Also, when you drop hot solder or you touch the silicone with the tip of the soldering iron, nothing happens. Um, I've used felt mats. I've used the, the cutting mats in all different colors. This silicone is hands down the best. I, I really do recommend this. Um, the only mat I haven't used is glass. I, there's some people that like glass mats, um, which is kind of cool. You can take like uh, dry erase markers and like write you know, measurements and shit down so that you remember them. Um, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried a, uh, a glass mat yet. I, I really like the, the traction of this, um, of this silicone surface. So the, the magneticness of the top of the mat is, I don't know, it's kind of cool, I guess. Um, it's definitely cool when I crash a tiny whoop into this area and all the screws don't go flying all over the goddamn place. That is a definite plus to having the top of the mat be magnetic. All right, so this is always difficult. Uh, it is made infinitely more difficult when there's a bunch of shit stuck to the, uh, hanging off of the AIO, like a, uh, like a Walksnail VRX, for example. So this is the best method that I've found to get these grommets through, but everybody seems to have their own little way of doing this um for me though i use these blunt tipped tweezers squeeze the grommet and push pull back a little bit squeeze the grommet push squeeze it and push and eventually you'll get just enough well i just poked it all the way through but usually you can get enough through where you can then come onto this side with your fingernail and just pull it the rest of the way through but in this case i was able to just mash it through there um certain aios have slightly bigger or slightly smaller holes um this beta fpv cross shape aio uh it's not super difficult other than on the side here where the motor plugs are but it's still not all that difficult um so yeah the 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 key is getting a finger on the grommet here to hold it in place while you take your tweezers and sneak it through there uh, once you get these grommets started, it's not bad. It's just that that first little bit that can be a real pain in the ass. Um, when you're doing these grommets, follow the rule that I've recently learned in talk therapy, uh, which is the 2010 rule. Uh, work on stuff for stuff that's like super frustrating or super difficult or whatever. Work on it for 20 minutes and then take 10 minutes off. Um, that is a, a perfect rule to use with these grommets because God damn, can it get frustrating? And like the more frustrated you get, the worse you're going to be at it. It really helps to be in like completely calm when you're doing this. So use the 2010 rule, my friends, and live yourself a better life. All right. And the last extra tall grommet is getting poked out here. Oh, I'm dumb. I meant to, I meant to fly this thing, uh, at the, at the beginning of the live stream and then we could, we could compare it. Uh, but I have flown hundreds of batteries through this rig at the, uh, at the drift car places. So I know exactly how much runtime this gets, which is a minute and 50, uh, to a minute and 55 seconds. Um, so yeah, we're good. I know exactly what to expect here. I'm doing this backwards. Put it through like that, you donkey. There we go. This is gonna be the hardest one because it's right on top of the USB port. But we are gonna get it. See, like this is what I mean. Like you gotta have a finger on it to to hold it on there while you go after it with the with the tweezers. That's one of the things that took me forever to figure out. A lot of people use the dental floss trick, man. 
I've tried that a bunch, and I recently tried it again. I I don't know what it is. I, I just it, the dental floss thing does not work for me. Th this works so much better. Um, so I've already got the Waxnail camera in here. Uh, so let's. Oh, that kind of sucks. I have this uh, glued down really nicely. Uh, I forgot about that. Well, I kind of have to... I have the, the camera cable running through the front part of the frame here. Um, so I do kind of have to leave this camera in here. So, yeah, I'm going to pick this. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove this E6000 with my fingernail here. And, uh, yeah, kind of annoying, but that's fine. All right, so the beauty of E6000, it's, it's just a big glomp of snot in a, in a tube. It comes off just like a big, tasty booger. Oh, God. That's, <laughs> that's an awful thing to say. Uh, for the record, I've never eaten a booger. I don't know if they're actually tasty or not. What is uh, that? You know, like I'm all for picking your nose. Like, like I'm I'm for it, man. You got a big boogie. There's nothing that feels better than getting in there and digging that fucker out. But then to put it in your mouth, what the hell? What are you doing? Especially when there's other people around. Come on now, don't do that. What are you thinking? Like that is it the thrill? Like is it is it like is it like doing sex in public? Is is that is that the draw? Oh, this is sketchy. I'm trying to just cut the E6000 that's holding the the Mippy and leave the the E6000 that's holding the uh the True RC Singularity. I don't know how good of a job I'm doing though. I'm also trying to be super gentle on this MIPI cable because apparently they're very fragile. Okay, we're there, we're there. I stretched it out enough where I can just come in here and give it a little snip. Snip, snip, motherfucker. There we go. And come on off of there. Come on, you bastard. Oh, so it's the the little like i don't know they they wrap this mippy cable in this black stuff and it's well yeah there it goes it ripped that's fine though uh, and then let's just chop this last little bit and we're free all right cool so now i mean i just have this kind of booger here which i might as well pick off E6000 is just magical stuff. It's also sold as welder uh, on Amazon. It's the same stuff. Uh, this is actually welder, but yeah, I've used them both and, and they're they're exactly the same. Uh, it is magical stuff. Think of it like hot glue, um, but so, so it peels off like hot glue, which is amazing. Um, but then it deals with heat a lot better. And uh, the only problem with it is it takes 24 hours to cure. Other than that, it's the best stuff in the world. And it's uh, it doesn't eat plastic, and yeah, it's really cool stuff. If you don't have some, you need to go get some. You can get it pretty much anywhere, too. Um, on a If you get it from Amazon, it's going to be called Welder. If you go to, like, Hobby Lobby or something, it's actually e sold as E6000 in there, which is kind of wild. You would think it would be sold as welder in, in a, you know, a store like that. But no! All right, so we are going to get this. Oh, man, and they have this. This camera is liquid electric taped on, of course. Let's see if I can just somewhat easily. No, I'm going to need to. I'm going to need to put the nerd goggles on for this one to see what the hell I'm doing. Uh, this is the Beta FPV Cross Style AIO. It's just like their 5 amp. Uh, it's the best AIO for these walks nail builds, in my opinion. Uh, what was I just doing? What am I doing? Oh, 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 right, right. Getting this unplugged. Oh, 
this could be oh nice okay sweet they they did a terrible job liquid electric taping the camera on which is great for me uh all right so now we're gonna plug this camera in that is uh hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on Waits, waits, yo, waits. Let's get a head to head comparison here. So, the. This is going to be tough to do. No, it's not. Here's the. Here's all the stuff from before. Here are the extra long screws that you have to run to go through the carbon fiber. And. All right, so there's all the screws. Here are the uh, the the extra tall rubber grommets that you have to use for the USB to clear the bottom of the carbon fiber frame. Here's the carbon fiber frame, and here are the ducts. So this is the fractal build here, and wow, I didn't realize it was that heavy. Uh, Twenty-two point seven two grams. Twenty-two point. Wait, actually, that's not too bad. That's not too bad with um, uh, with walk snail. That's right. This is a walk snail build. Um, so yeah, twenty. Somebody type that in the chat so I don't forget it. Twenty two point seven five. Uh, so we don't need these ducks. And now that is with the lightest ducks available. The the um, uh, the Weebly Crown ducts. I do recommend that you, if you're gonna do a fractal build, I do recommend that you run these ducts because you can mount them under the carbon fiber which is really, really cool. And that really does make a difference. So, and, and they're also extra lightweight, which is gonna help because the fractal builds are always gonna be heavier since they're using carbon fiber, right? Um, and they're using these extra long motor screws here as well. Uh, the build that we're about to put together, let's tear that out. Uh, is the camera on there? Did I, oh, camera's on here. Uh, the build that we're about, to put together is going to be. Hold on, let me put these screws in here. How is this heavier? Hold on. What am I doing wrong? Do I have two cameras on here? Is this really heavier? Here are the screws that I need. I think that's a couple too many. 23.82. No way. How is that possible? Hold on. Uh, oh, I'd have to remove the camera. I'll be damned. Why did I think that? Hold on. Why did I think that that was? I've measured the weights before. I mean, weights are just numbers. It's kind of hard to get numbers wrong. Uh, do I have? I do. So the cockroach V3 frame is 3.28 grams versus that, these, and, uh, well, we need to measure the screws too. The screws do matter, believe it or not. All right, so, okay. So the, the fractal stuff is, yeah, 4.6 grams. What's happening here? 4.6 grams is the weight of the fractal with the lightest weight ducts and the longer screws. 4.60 versus 4.60 versus the newbie drone screws. Oh no, I already have the newbie drone screws in that other frame. 4.6 versus 3.27. What? Well, I mean, that's kind of, oh, 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 these, I forgot about these. That, that was, uh, that was a, a no, uh, a, a no hardware weight measurement. Um, okay. So that none of that matters. This is what matters. We're going from, oh, so yeah. And then we, we need to add 0.6 of a gram to this. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we got it. So 3.27 becomes 3.8. Eight seven, so that that's what we're doing. Yeah, three point eight seven versus four point six was it a minute ago when we weighed the fractal stuff? Um, so yeah, we are we are saving 
uh, I don't know, what's that, 0.8 of a gram? 0.6 of a gram? Uh, camera, camera's in there. Oh, you're right, you're right, there was no camera. Yeah, the camera is on here. Yeah, 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 okay, so that makes sense. That makes total sense. Um, let me do this again, let me do this again. I, I, I wanna get, I wanna get a, a total weight. I'll even do it with the scale facing you beautiful bastards. Can you see that? Okay, so let's tear it out. Okay, so the build that I'm about to do is short screws and okay. And then it's this frame. Those are the screws for this frame with the camera. And then we've got the squid. Uh, is that it? I think that's it. Camera's in there, 0.6 gram mount, frame, screws. What's that say? 23.81, 23.81. It's actually a little bit heavier than I thought, but it's a walk snail build, so that, that makes sense. Somebody type that in chat for me, so I don't forget, because I will absolutely forget. Versus, uh, we're gonna leave the, the heavier weight uh, rubber grommets out of this because this already has grommets on it. I don't want to double double way grommets. So this, and then here's the mounting hardware, and then carbon fiber ducts, and the squid, and now we need to add the camera. There it is. There it is. Yep, that makes much more sense. Twenty six. Uh, what's uh, I forget what the weight measurement was a minute ago. What what's the uh, what's the difference? What's the weight difference? What are we saving here? Feels like a gram and a half, maybe maybe one point four grams. God, that's a lot, yo. Uh, I didn't think I thought it was gonna be a less than one gram weight saving, and I was thrilled by that. <laughs> If I'm gonna save more than a gram, that's gonna make a huge difference in runtime um, and just general like flight performance. That's, that's, I am excited about that. Uh, camera, here we go. Here we go. So let me do this. Let me put the, um, let me put the AIO in here first thread the motors through, and then I'll plug the camera in. Because this is just so gangly right now. I need to de-ganglify this a little bit. So let's do this first. I hate doing this with the motors connected, but these little JST motor plugs, their, their service life is like not many plug and unplug cycles. So like, if possible, always try to not unplug shit um, and you'll get a longer lifespan out of it. Man, I am tempted to switch this BT 2.0 lead out, but I'm just not, I just don't, I'm not gonna do it. It's fine. Uh, okay, what's happening here? Yeah, yeah, no, there we go. Okay, so here's, that all right there it is cool so let's put this aio down on the cockroach frame perfect and let's get this elrs antenna up just a little bit okay rocking all right so now we've got the walk snail vtx let's make sure that you got to be careful. You got to make sure your wire runs are nice and clean um, because these two boards are going to be really close to one another. Um, you don't want these wires crossing over each other. They become really thick when they do that. So be extra insane about your wire runs on this. All right, cool. So that's where I need it. And so now I just need to get this camera plugged in. And boy, this is... This is gonna be tight. That's what she said. Jeez, uh, I kind of wish I'd plugged it in a minute ago. <laughs> I wish I hadn't waited to do it, but I, I think we'll be able to get this done. 
Boy, this camera, we are going to be using every millimeter of this camera cable. Holy Christ. Uh, we have just enough, though. It's just barely long enough. Oh, God damn. There we go. Get in there. Ah, uh, that satisfying little mippy click. There it is. Okay. And now, recently I've been running the mippy cable in between the boards. Um, I was a little nervous to do that at first, but it's been completely fine. So, I actually do recommend uh, doing that. You just make a little angle with it, and it just kind of tucks right under. Um, even better is if you run it up like that. And then it goes right through there. And hopefully, it's just barely long enough. Although it might not be. There's a chance that it's not quite long enough. Hold on. I got a twist in it that I need to get out. Um, there we go. Maybe that's why it was too short a second ago. Because there was a, a full twist in the, in the MIPI cable. All right. That's better. That's better. There's the click. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Man, there is not an extra millimeter to be had on that on that cable. That's wild. Okay, so we're pretty much done. All we got to do is bolt the motors down and uh, we will be good to go here and throw the screws in. I don't even know what screws I'm going to use on this uh, AIO. I guess I have a bunch of these silver guys. This Again, um, this is going to change once I can get my hands on the... Uh, once I can get my hands on that 3D print from Newbie Drone, uh, I'm going to change this up to mount the uh, the AIO on the underside of this frame and the the Walksnail VTX on top. That'll be extra slick. I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but for right now, I just want to start to test this camera mount. Man, these screws are just not quite. I mean, they are long enough, but I wish I had slightly longer big-headed screws like this. There are some more on the table here. What about this? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I don't know where these screws came from, by the way, but I like them. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, but I only have two of these, <laughs> of course. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, what about this? This is the Mobula 7 screw. Nope, that's too short. Uh, so, fine. I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to use this match set of slightly too short ones. This is a cinematic rig. This is what I use to chase the little RC drift cars. I'm not going to be crashing this thing hard. Um, I can just throw these screws in and tighten them down a little bit more to get them to engage the, the plastic a little bit extra and we'll be totally fine. Uh, hopefully this will only be in this configuration for uh, uh, the next week, let's say. Um, oh man, these are really short though. <laughs> um, well, let's give them a shot. It'll be, it should be okay. Actually, I, oh, do I have, I might have something going on this Thursday. Oh, I do. I think I have a gig. I do. I have a gig this Thursday, actually. So I'm not going to run this. Uh, at the drift car place this Thursday. Uh, uh, I have a, a music video gig this Thursday for Da Baby. Uh, about a year ago, um, I did a music video with a really talented crew for Little Baby, um, and they remembered me. And when Da Baby had this uh, this music video filming in Atlanta, I was the one that, that got the call, which is really, really cool. It's it's amazing when, it's super flattering when like a, a, a really good crew like that actually remembers you and something that you've done. Like that's, that's wild. Uh, so yeah, that'll be good. It's been a slow start to the year. It, it always is, every year it is. Nobody wants to be outside filming when it's balls ass cold. Um, but it's still balls ass cold and, and they're, they're getting out there and doing it. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, and I am obviously glad to oblige. All right, so I already am really looking forward to this walk snail board being dropped down because this Mippy cable is like all up on this duct. It's it's going to be fine, but yeah, this is going to be much much better once the uh once there's one board on top, one board on bottom. There we go. Um cool. Let's get these motors mounted with these tiny little screws and we'll see what kind of I mean, runtime is the big thing that I'm going for here. I know that's super boring. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, runtime is is the main uh, improvement. Not getting two minutes out of this thing has been driving me absolutely crazy. Because like, it, it takes me like a minute to to sort of get my eye in chasing these little drift. So like, w one of the things that happens right is like there's a a a, a varying degree of skill. Uh, from the drivers of these little RC drift cars. Um, I get the feeling that these RC drift cars are as difficult as like FPV. Um, so when I, you know, each battery I go out and, and I'll like, I'll try to chase like a different car. Not to mention that the cars are different. Some of the cars are different chassis, different weights, different powers. Um, and so like, I'll spend the first minute just kind of like learning that driver's style and then like, I'll just start to kind of get into it and then the battery's dead and I got to come back uh, and then it kind of starts all over again. So man, if I can get like, ah, Christ, I would be happy with two minutes and 10 seconds. I, any extra runtime, I'll be so happy with. Um, I'm very, very, very curious. Uh, I did just change this over to these 36,000 KV motors. I kind of wish I hadn't done that. Um, I probably won't need this much motor now that I've got the, the lighter set up with a lot less uh, obstruction, but look, it's, the motors are on here. Let's give it a shot. At some point, I'll probably try going down to like 30,000 KV, because again, this is a chase rig. Um, but what I'm, what I'm curious about, the reason that I went to these higher KV motors is like, I want to do more of like the dance. Like I, I want to, I want to be able to incorporate some of the stuff that like Gaver does, G-A-V-R, um, where like, you're not just chasing, but you're like interacting and, and you're like throwing yourself up over the car and like going from, from, uh, flying backwards in the front of it to like jumping off, jumping over it and then like locking right in on the back bumper. Um, and in order to do that kind of stuff, you just need a whole bunch of power. You, you need low up tilt. That's a big key to Gavr's style. Um, and, and his just ability to do that, but you also need a bunch of power. Sleepy CBR with another $5 super chat. He says, for the healthcare fund, because nobody likes a sick Ciotti. Thank you, dude. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Much appreciated, my man. I hope you can make it to uh, Rampage this year. It's uh, one of the highlights for me is getting to hang out with you at Micro Mayhem um, every year. We just have such a blast, man. And it's just, yeah. Go figure. A couple of FPV flying car guys get along really well. No. All right, and come on now. Which which way is this? Why are these wire leads requiring a, a turn? That's incredibly annoying. I know why. It's because I haven't rewired these. When when I when I switch the leads up on these motors, I'm such a nerd that I uh, I set the new leads up so that they go direct to the, the, the one, the one on the right goes to the right plug. The one on the middle goes to the middle the one on the left goes to the left. Um, these are motors that I haven't rewired. So two of the motors are set up to spin clockwise and two of them are set up to spin counterclockwise. So two of these motors, the wire runs are perfect. The other two of these motors, the wire runs require a 180 degree twist, which at this very moment, makes me want to scream. But we'll be all right. We'll be fine. We will be fine. Dude, the testing of this awesome little TPU camera mount designed by Timmons is about 
to begin. This was a working rig. There is absolutely no reason. And quite honestly, if it does not work, I'm going to shit my pants. There is just like, there have been plenty of situations where it's like, this was a working rig, but I changed a capacitor and now it doesn't work. That doesn't make any sense. No, 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 no. This is next level right here. This is like changing frames. There's just no reason. There's actually no reason. Sometimes there's that like 0.01% of a chance, but this is a 0% chance other than like, like if it oscillates to the moon, but that's just a quick PID change. That's, that's, that's easy. Uh, but I, I actually, I bet you it doesn't, <laughs> I bet you it's totally fine. There we go. All right. Oh boy, I'm so excited, man. I've been trying to figure out how to mount a camera like this for like six months. <laughs> it's been so long, probably longer than that, probably closer to like a year. Ooh, look at that. Here's what I mean by the wire runs. This one makes me happy. See it? This one makes me sad. This one makes me happy. This one's a little bit ugly right now. This one makes me sad. Hold on, let me fix this one. Let me fix this one. Hold on. Oh God. One of the, the the one wire is like a weird length. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This needs to look good. If you're not gonna fly good, man, you better look good. So let me just there we go. That's a little bit better. Yeah. There it is. Nobody cares. All right. Somebody cares. <laughs> Guaranteed. Somebody just went, oh, thank you. Guaranteed. All right, yo. We took a working rig out of one frame, put it into another frame, and now it's going to catch on fire. <laughs> uh, this is a Loxdale build, so we're going to get these. And we're going to pull this cable up. Get it plugged on in. This is an HDMI to USB-C cable. Going into a uh, Elgato HD60S. We're gonna take, uh, these are old beat batteries. So this is, why did I not charge a fresh newer battery? What the hell is wrong with me? Let me put one on here real quick. Every single battery that I have on this charger right now is an old banged up battery. No, I've got one good one. I've got one semi-fresh, semi-new battery. Let me get the, the other old moldy batteries off here. Let's let's run an old moldy battery first. Uh, here, here it is. Let me let me take one one more uh, weight measurement of it. Wait wait wait. We haven't done this in a while. Hold on. Oh yeah yeah. We haven't done this in a while. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. We got this. We got this. Let's do... This is this is OG CID FPV right here. Hold on. Uh, some of you know what, what what's about to go down. And you're, and you're very excited. I can feel it. Uh, wait. No, 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 no. That's not what I want to do. That's not what I want to do. I'll get copyright dinged for that. I want to go in here. Okay. Here, let me find a decent one. Nope, I don't like that one. Oh yeah, 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 that one, that one, that one's, that's the one, that's the one. All right, hold up, hold up. Here we go, here we go. It's coming at you. Coming at you, here it comes. I hope you're ready. I hope you're wearing a diaper. You're gonna need it. Wait, let me turn the scale off. Here it comes. Here we go, here we go. I gotta turn it up. I gotta turn it all the way up. Cause this is a directional mic. Here we go.
<laughs> I haven't done one of those in a while. There you go. That's what it looks like. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Uh, what does it weigh? It weighs... Uh, 24.3 grams dry. What are you beeping for, Goggles? Is that a low battery beep? 7 volts. What's that? 3.5 per? Yeah, it's too low. Hold on. Hold on, please. Yeah, battery's dead. Ah, uh, of course. Oh, shit. I gotta charge some goggle, goggle batteries. Okay. Uh, oh boy, I don't have any left. I just have this uh, old Fat Shark battery. This will work though. All right, here we go. <laughs> Demo FPVS to go change his diaper. Flowy McSteez says, just catching up, uh, you put blood, sweat, and tears uh, into, ripping <laughs> into ripping off the Nintendo logo. It's funny you say that because there's actually almost nothing Nintendo about it. It's, it's actually, um, w what we ripped off is... Uh, the uh the business uh font from the front of the building that the male character in the the show with uh red scarlet uh the marvel show i forget the name of it now um but the um her cyborg husband guy in the first couple of episodes uh when he goes to work he works at this computer company and, uh, yeah, they're the font that they use in their logo. I just absolutely loved. So that's what we ripped off. We didn't rip off Nintendo. Um, almost all your logos are direct ripoffs, Burger King and so on. Uh, and your mo main logo, two fonts covered. Floyd McSteez is, is, uh, is dancing dangerously on, uh, <laughs> getting banned from the whole channel. So let's see, let's see if, if he says something else, uh, shitty and then we won't have to deal with him anymore. Um, yeah, you know, that, like, you'll notice if you look at, like, well, I don't know, anyone, that, like, lots of people do that. Um, it's super fun. So, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, here we go. Let's get the HD VRX up here. Cool, we got that. Crappy battery first. Let's just see what happens. And, well, the first thing we'll see is, does the battery actually clear the uh, camera and the mount? There we go. Yeah, go look, at the, uh, go look at the Nintendo logo. The font's completely different. All right, let's see. David Ciotti with a $10 super chat. Thank you, Dad. Healthcare fund life. Uh, also, we're going to get to see if the, uh, the little... Tulip petals, top and bottom, are visible in the uh, in the thing, in the camera view. Oh wow, they're not. I was sure that they would be. Wow, amazing. You know, Timmons nailed this. Uh, so I have the uh, yeah, I have this this VTX really dialed for the. Um, for the drift car place. So it's it's the, the the camera quality is not gonna be the best in the house here. But that's okay. We're more worried about the runtime and whatnot. Uh, I don't know if this is the right uh I don't know if this is the right module. It is the right module, I'll be damned. Wow, look at that zero up tilt. Look how much carpet is in the frame. So hopefully this stupid cable doesn't keep disconnecting and you guys maintain the ability to see what I'm doing. Would you look at that? There is absolutely no problem with the tune. So the, the carbon fiber fractal frame, I had this tune maxed for that carbon fiber frame and now we're in a, you know, a, a floppy in air quotes plastic frame. Oh, this battery is shot already. Um, and the, uh, and the, the cranked up tune is totally fine. All right. So this is one of the batteries that's really struggling. Uh, let's see what it bounces back. Yeah. This battery is wrecked. Look at it bouncing all the way back up to 
3.85 and it was sagging so hard that it was almost browning the uh, uh, the Walksnail VTX out. Uh, that is the sign of a bad battery. I am going to... Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to just put that battery aside. All right, let's try another old battery. They're they're not most of them still work. <laughs> most of them are not that bad. Um so yeah, the battery clears the mount, the battery clears the camera, it even clears the uh the little MIPI cable. It, what a perfect fit. Good god. And where's that healthcare fund at? Uh there it is. 57 goes to 67. Thank you, Dad. Very cool of you. Very, very cool. All right. Hopefully this battery lasts more than 13 seconds. But it's already at 4.15 volts, so that's not a good sign. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. So now with a... Um, all right. So I take it back. I was wrong. With a more charged battery... The tune is a little bit on the edge. I was actually pretty surprised by that. Um, they do make a carbon fiber brace for this frame, but I don't recommend that you use it. Uh, oh, you know what the other thing is? I have not retuned this since I put these banana pants motors on it. So let's just take this tune down a little bit and now it'll be fine. Nope, it's still... It's still got a little bit too much action on it. So next time I land, I'll take another point or two off. I would rather have less weight and run lower PIDs, especially on like, you know, this is a cinematic rig, so it really doesn't matter. But, I mean, this is also, remember, this is on 60, uh, 36,000 KV motors. So watch, there won't be any bounce back. See what I mean? If you're running a really high KV motor, you're like sort of mechanically uh increasing your pid values and so you don't have to run crazy amounts of uh degain to not get bounce back and and to to not get a properly fl flying setup and this is on 36,000 so i mean like these are yeah some of the the, the second highest kv motors that exist if i uh if i motor limited these down I'd be able to keep the PIDs the same. But, again, on a carbon fiber frame, for sure, it's going to do a better job isolating um, the gyro from uh, from vibration. So that does make sense. Um, we could get around that by putting the carbon fiber frame, uh, carbon fiber brace on this Cockroach 65 V3 frame. But, again, I do not recommend it. Hey, Floyd McSteez. Thank you, Brandon. Let me, uh, let me, oh, I wish you hadn't done that. Oh, wait, no, here we go. I got it. And see ya. Good luck with that. All right, here we go. VTX is overheating. Uh, ooh, this, nah, this battery's, man, these batteries are hammered ass. Well, they're not that bad so wait yeah okay i mean this just <laughs> it just flies before it really flew like a it very specifically flew like a cinewoop now it just kind of flies wow this little camera mount might work for wow okay yeah this little camera mount might work for freestyle stuff that was not its intent at all. I gotta stop doing this. This is the rig that I need to keep clean and not slam into the ground. <laughs> and these motors are absolutely fresh on here, so. Damn. You know, this, this just, it just feels like normal. Um, when it was in the carbon frame, it had a whole different kind of feel to it. Um, whereas this just feels like a tiny whoop. Whoa, easy. 
Which is great. The less adjustment that you need to make, the better. Oh man. I cannot wait to chase I cannot I cannot wait to chase with this. Oh god! <laughs> oh let's see. Yep, totally fine. Cool. So I'm railing this thing around the room and on a shitty old battery and somehow we're at a minute and fifty. Hold on. Let me let me so we're gonna run a fresh battery. Oh my god, a minute and fifty. Uh, we're gonna run a fresh battery, and I'm gonna fly this thing like I do at the, uh, at the drift car place. So, this battery is good, I'm gonna put it over here. Hopefully this is not one of the fresh batteries that I over-discharged. <laughs> uh, and ruined, because I have a bunch of those, <laughs> which is kind of annoying. Alright, here we go. Oh, come on guys, don't... <laughs> Infinity Poops is in the chat, don't do that. Don't do that, guys. Come on. That's not cool. We're not we're not fighting negativity with negativity. All right? That's that's not what the title of this stream is. The, the title of the stream is you know, me just regurgitating the words that were put into my mouth. All right. So look, this is a battery that's at 4.2 something and it's trying to fly away. Hold on. I forgot to make that uh, change in the PIDs. Profile Unfortunately, that just hammered the battery pretty hard, but that's okay. That'll be fine. All right, so back down here, zero bounce back. So the the PID tune is still dialed, even though the numbers are are lower than they were. But again, remember, I don't, I didn't even fly this on the thirty six thousands. I don't think I, I brought it with me. Um, and one of the motors was spinning the wrong direction. So I would have had to... So this rig had... So this is just me simulating how I fly at the at the drift car place. It's just low elevation cruising. I mean, this is a little bit faster, I think, but it'll be fine. Um, yeah, so the, the tune that was on here was tuned for... Uh, was it 20? No, the other rig had the 28s. So this had 32,000 kV uh, Weebleed motors on it. So that's what that tune was for. It now has 36,000. Every time I've gone from 32 to 36 and then from 36 to 40, I've had to do exactly what you guys just saw and, and back the tunes down a little bit. The higher kV motors make more power, and with more power comes quicker response time. And that quicker response and and when you raise the pid values all you're doing is telling the pid loop to be more to to attack the bad behaviors it, it, to attack it going off set point is the real situation uh earlier so putting a putting a more powerful motor on putting a sorry not a more powerful a higher kv motor on is a part of what you're doing is turning the pid gains up um, so you, and, and if you, if you have your PID tunes anywhere near the limit, you will then have to back the PID tune off. And so it is no surprise that I had to do it. Um, but yeah, as long as you're not getting bounce back, then the tune is fine. You know what I mean? Like once you've killed the bounce back in the prop wash, um, the like you're done going going farther than that with the tune doesn't really make much sense all right so we're getting down on voltage three four four the way that i come home is i do a throttle blip and i see if it's browning out see it's just barely starting to brown out let's give it a little bit more time keep doing throttle blips i bring it back when it like really is about to brown out holy shit it's at 245 already what? Is it going to go three minutes? No fucking way. No way. There it is. That's when I bring it home. That's the brownout that I'm looking for. <laughs> Fuck off. No way. That... Alright. Uh, I guess... Maybe 
I must push hard. That there's no way. There's no way it's getting 50% more runtime. I I must use more full throttle at the I mean, when when I go to the drift car place, we'll I'm going to fly a shitload of these batteries and away we go. Um and and we'll get the actual number. That's a lot though. Wow. Um I have to assume that'll come down. I I have to assume that that will um that that will come down to 240, 230. I'm I'm thrilled though. Damn. Uh yeah. That's great. 3 minutes right on the nose too. Um damn. I love it. That's uh, more than I thought. I would I would have been happy with two two ten or two twenty. Uh, that's super cool. Jesus. Okay. So what I'm not going to do yet, I am going to put this mount onto a freestyle rig. Um, what I'm curious about is will this mount pop off when when we nose this thing into stuff? Uh, will this mount pop off? Uh, I asked Timmons right now. The so I guess I didn't do a great job of showing this. Uh, so this will be like one of the last things that we do. All right. So it is hooking in to the little hooks here. I'll show you this one. All right. So it's, can you fucking focus? Pick one to focus on. God damn it. Hold on. There we go. So it's using these little hooks. And right now, um, what am I doing? Bob Knox just printed me a whole bunch of these things, and they're just sitting right here. Uh, V2, V1, V... Oh, I'm using the V3. There's a V4 in here. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, i got to start using the V4. So, right now, the slots are rectangles. There it is. So the, the slots that go into those hooks are rectangles. What I asked Timmons today to do was to change these to squares because if you look at if you look at where it actually sits on the hook, it is a square. You know what I mean? Like right now as a rectangle, it'll easily pop over here. But what we can do is turn them out 90 degrees and then push it down and then angle it. And then so once those holes are squares, it'll lock right in to the to the inner part here. And I don't think the mount will ever really want to come off. Um, so that I, I think that's going to be like the last change. Other than that, I, I mean, I didn't know what to tell him today to, to change. Uh, so I think it's going to pretty much stay exactly like this, which is great because it it goes on there really solid. It sits in here really firm. It actually pulls the camera back ever so slightly into the frame. So the camera is like absurdly secure. Like it, it's, it's just there. Um, and yeah, it like, it just fits perfect. The, the width of the back of the camera is like the perfect width for this, uh, cockroach V3 frame. It, it, it's like it was meant to be there. I don't know. It's, it's, it's wild.